to know more about our ministry, you can visit us at www.sevenrivers.org backslash students. Produced, written, written by me. <laughs> Not that I'm prideful or anything about <laughs> Just, it. Like, you're a big deal, Mike. I know I'm really a big deal. Can I have your autograph I with that do, pencil? I that should you do just movies. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, you should. I am Mikey Puckett. I'm the <laughs> youth pastor. Yeah. We're going with pastor today. Ooh, I like pastor guys. at Seven Rivers He's Church, and this is the one and only Sarah Harris. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! She's super famous. She does something around here. She does everything around here. So. Except for produce music. That's true. <laughs> That's all me. That's full credit to it's me. Okay. It's okay. So you're listening to The Spilt Milk, which is a podcast about the mess of parenting teens. And if you're listening to this and you're like, what in the world am I doing with these teenagers? And if you feel like giving up and quitting or feel like you're full of parent shame, welcome to the Spilt Milk Podcast. Welcome. Because that's... This is where you belong. Yeah. Right here with us <laughs> where we, in this moment. We aren't even parents of teens, and we feel shame over parenting our teens. So. Seriously. <laughs> and we just want you to know, too, that uh, we're on YouTube and Instagram. You can actually watch this happen. So oh my gosh. follow us on Seven River Student yeah. Ministry on both YouTube yeah. or Instagram, and, and, and you can watch this magic. They get extra credit if they can tell us what we're wearing today. The other week, Jason and I were recording the Culture Cast, uh-huh. and literally there are firefighters walking behind us while a fire <laughs> alarm is going off, and we, we were acting like it's not a real... <laughs> just kept on it's talking. It's just casual just fire alarm, no talking. big deal. No big deal at so all. So you could catch little things like that <laughs> if you want. Yeah, it is pretty... Like, whatever happens back here is pretty entertaining, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like we're in a corner office, so it's cool. Yeah, super cool. This office is super cool that we're this doing. This office is super cool. So subscribe to the podcast as well. We want to grow the show. We want to grow this. Share it with people. Mm-hmm. Tell people about it because we think it's awesome. Yeah. So listen, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of what we're going to be talking about today. It involves stories, as always. <laughs> lots of stories. And it involves telling stories to your teenagers. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? How should you tell your story? Should you talk about your life with your teenagers? What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? All those things to come in a few seconds. So hold on. (laughs) Buckle up. Here we go. I hope Mikey's got some answers. (laughs) Yeah, I got something. society in our world our teenagers have problems okay so mm-hmm. your kids your students your teenagers they have a problem the thing is is we love a good story we love stories and guess what the culture knows this too businesses know this instagram knows this snapchat knows this mm-hmm. facebook knows this why is there this thing on your instagram feed called a story because people love stories and so people share stories and like to share stories and so do you and i and and what's so interesting and i love we've brought this book up several times but donald miller talks about in a million miles in a thousand years talk one of our favorite books one of yours my favorite book of all time in the history in the history of the world outside of the bible though of course of course (laughs) of course (laughs) but what's so interesting that donald miller brings up he has a conversation with one of his friends about his teenage daughter and he's like my teenage daughter is just living a life that I don't approve of, I don't like, all these things. It's just venting and sharing with Donna Miller. And Donna Miller looks at him and says, sounds like you're selling your daughter a really crappy story. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he didn't know really where that came from or how that happened, but he meets with the guy a month later, his friend, and he shares about his daughter. He's like, everything's changed. And, and Donna Miller's like, why? 
And, and it's, he's like, I took to heart what you said about s- giving my family, giving my daughter a crappy story. And we decided that we were just going to build an orphanage in Africa. And so they build an orphanage. <laughs> they raise money, <laughs> create a website, do all this stuff. His daughter leads um, the website, sets it all up, and buys into the story of, like, our family is on a mission. And so they create this this organization that builds an orphanage in Africa. It, it I mean, absolutely. Obviously, I'm sugarcoating and whitewashing a bunch of the details of the story in the book so buy the book read the book so good so good (laughs) so many more things but what i love about the book is the emphasis on story and i Mm -hmm. think that's so true for our teenagers as well and i think when we reach that age when we are parents with those teenagers we're at the point where it's like we kind of start getting hands off with it Mm -hmm. and hands off with like we start giving them some responsibility and distance and we think that comes with relational distance as well Mm -hmm. But we want to push back against that and say, no, your students, your teenagers need to know your story. They need to know who you are and who their parents are because they need to know what story they are part of and what story they're going to be part of in the future. Mm-hmm. And so those are some of the things that are so critical to think about as you're parenting teenagers is what is the story that my teens believe in? What do they buy into? They buy into some sort of story. Business advertisers know this, and they're selling them a story. So they're every single day consuming a story, a narrative about themselves and about Mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. What is that narrative, and what's the narrative maybe that you even buy into? Now, are you sharing the narrative um, of your story with your family so that they know what what is essentially their story? Because in a way, you as a parent, you are your story is part of their story, and. The, your parents' story, you know, think about your parents, is part of your story. And, and you're inheriting the story as we go through. And so the reason why we want to go back to stories, which we started off this podcast talking about, and then we went into, you know, uh, delight, boundaries, and repair. Now we're diving into right back into stories mm-hmm. because we think we, we – I want to go back at least and get to this point where you as a parent – as you've done counseling, as you've done some of this work, start sharing your story. So what do you think, Sarah? Has have any of your parents ever shared their story with you? No. <laughs> um, no. And I think I think that's a really interesting question. I think it's common for um, maybe even parents in our demographic and for our the parents who might be listening to this, their parents, because a lot of them are kind of our our age, maybe a little bit older, but or my age a little bit older. But the, pe- the people in my parents' generation were very, like, private, I think, about their mm. stories. And so I see ways that that's missing in my life as a daughter, in my life, as, as, I, as I try to figure out what my story is and what my story could look like moving forward. There is this missing piece of what is my parents' story? What, like, you know, I know little pieces of their story. I know how they met. I know, yeah. you know, some, some things, but I really don't know a ton of their story. And I think that, um, it's, this is, I love that we're talking about this because I would love for th- this generation of parents to be more open with their stories and to have stories that they can bring their kids into. So when their kids move forward, they can do some of the same things and leave some of the, uh, the same legacy that their parents left, but also change some of the things that maybe um, their parents don't love about their stories. I think, and I would say my parents have shared sparingly pieces mm-hmm. of their stories. They have shared parts of their stories with me, and I've learned so much from those mm-hmm. moments when they share. I remember when I was, uh, I think I was maybe five or six years old, we would watch uh, my parents' wedding video, my family, <laughs> Uh, my kids, not my parents, the the kids of the family, me and my siblings, right. we would sit down and watch our parents' wedding video. Incredibly boring video. <laughs> so bad. Such a long wedding, like two plus hours. It <laughs> was <laughs> awful. What? <laughs> yeah. Beautiful wedding, though. Beautiful people, obviously. Of course. <laughs> but <laughs> the jeans. <laughs> the, the, thing, the thing that like is so fascinating is how did that entertain us? It's because it was my story Yeah. being shown on video. This is the story of Mikey on video this is the story of my siblings this is where we came from this is where we started and the bible is not silly when it is most of it is narrative it it understands this human beings are story driven story oriented and stories have the power to change us and they have the power to ground us and so the bible 
serves as that purpose. So like when you read the Bible as a Christian, as a Christian parent, you're engaging in the story of you Mm -hmm. and the story of how you came to be and how in your faith and Mm -hmm. how you are here now. And where does this all come from? I remember even being a little kid asking my dad, where do we come from? Like, and and kids have those questions and teenagers just have the same questions. Mm -hmm. And I bet teenagers want to know about you and your story. I still, to this day, as an adult, I'm 28 years old, and I want to know my parents' story. I want to know about their lives and what happened. And if they ever want to share that with me, I am. I would love to hear it, and I would love to know those things. Uh, and, 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 and part of me wonders, why do we want to know that? But I think the reason, I think my answer to the reason why, and maybe you have a different answer, is because uh, in knowing our story of our parents, we learn something about ourselves, mm-hmm. and it helps us to know who we are even more. Mm-hmm. And and that's why the Bible is such a great tool, uh, but also that's why our parents' stories to us are mm-hmm. such a great tool as well, and so important for a teenager and so important for a kid and a student is because it reveals pieces of us and explains to us why we are the way we are mm-hmm. and how we can handle those things, and it teaches us something Mm -hmm. every single time and it changes us and transforms us uh for better or for worse Mm -hmm. so that's something that i've been learning a lot about storytelling and learning a lot about that especially as you go into counseling you learn some of these concepts and key things and hopefully you are in counseling and learning these same ideas Mm -hmm. um with us and i think as you go through counseling i think there are pieces of your story that you should start sharing with your middle school student and high school student but I would love for Sarah to add her input on that as well. Yeah, I um, I think of I, I I think a lot of the reason that I want to know my parents' story is similar to yours. To, is similar to you and your reasons. Um, t- you know, there's like the the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, yeah. and so <laughs> there are things that I do, and I have no idea why that I do them. And there have been moments in my life where I've been. I've, I've seen my mom do something. I'm like, oh my gosh, that. <laughs> it's like that progressive it like, commercial. Yeah, oh, it's awful. It's like all of a sudden you just realize, oh my gosh, that's where I got that from. And I think that, um, I think there are bigger, more important things that we do. Right. There are ways that we react to people or there are ways that we think about ourselves or our, 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 our God even that maybe are subconsciously coming from our parents' stories, the stories that they're passing yeah. down to us. And so as we get to hear those and learn those stories, things start to click and you, yeah. and, and it creates a new pathway to be able to create new stories or new patterns that maybe are right. healthier or to continue in some really healthy ways. There are lots of yeah. ways that both of our parents have taught us um, that we want to continue in yeah. because they've been beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I think especially since the world – like to ignore your story is such a dangerous thing mm-hmm. because in, in ignoring your story, you're ignoring your truth. You're ignoring who you are. You're covering it up. You're hiding it. And then your kids don't get to know who their mom and dad are. They mm-hmm. could have kids, teenagers. Oftentimes when we talk with them as pastors, student pastors, we encounter – just this lostness, this confusion, this where am I, Mm -hmm. who am I, where am I going kind of concepts that are constantly brought to the surface with these teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I think a big reason for that is because they long to know their mom and dad. They long to know their parents and know their stories so that they can know who they are. And, And so, you know, there's this like relationship of if you know God, you know yourself. If you learn about God, you're actually learning about yourself. If you learn about yourself, you can also see characteristics of God in it. There's this kind of interesting relationship that Mm -hmm. if you are ignoring your story, if you've listened to this podcast and you've been ignoring it, you are ignoring pieces of yourself, both good and bad, that your your kids need to know Mm -hmm. and need to know appropriately um, based on their age. But they have to know in order for themselves to be able to, and in order for them to find themselves in the story of their family mm-hmm. and in the biblical story, it's such a big deal, um, and it really does matter. And this helps you in knowing your story to know also by knowing the Bible story as well. So knowing your story and the Bible story, you can know the final destination. You can know the goal of your story, the purpose to glorify God, and you can start implementing those things in your family mm-hmm. and leading your family in the big narrative of Scripture leading your family to look forward to the day when 
the world is filled with God's people, and and the Garden of Eden is brought back home to earth. We get home. We make it home. That's the story that we're telling. We have the greatest story to tell our students and teenagers, and, and we need to tell them that. But part of the reason, so like you can tell them the biblical story, and that's really good. But actually the Bible comes to life when you talk about how the Bible and God and your faith have impacted your own story mm-hmm. and in your own life. And for you to be able to go into those dark places and those hard places with your students shows them, shows your students, shows your kids that they don't have to be afraid of the moments when they make really big mistakes or to them make big mistakes. They don't have to be afraid of those moments because not only has God been there, but their mom and dad have been there. Mm-hmm. And they can come back to you and trust you and work through it with you. Um, not only with God, but also with you. So you can almost be like a priest in a sense where you're ushering in the presence of God through mm-hmm. your story. You can uh, make scripture, in a sense, comes to life. It is alive in your story as a Christian. And so you can sh- reveal that by sharing your shortcomings, how you've fallen short, how you've sinned, and mm-hmm. how you've needed to repent, and how Jesus has been a big, big Savior for you and can be a big, big Savior for your teenagers. But that cannot happen if you hide Mm -hmm. from your story that cannot happen if you hide from your trauma that cannot happen if you don't seek out professional counseling or seek out um, a pastor or seek out one of us and start bringing that conversation to light bringing it into light uh, with your friends and family members that is so critical uh, because because sin hides in darkness your story your shame hides in darkness and your kids your teenagers they want to know you as much as you may feel like they don't want to know you they want to know your story So the other day, um, this is a question for you, Mikey. The other day I was on the phone with a parent, um, and this parent has a story and they're, his kids, you know, kind of know some of his story, but maybe not all of his story. Um, and one of the, one of the concerns was I've told my story. They know some of my story, but they see that I've come out on the other side and I'm okay. Now they see that like redemption, basically they've seen like the story of redemption, and, but his fear is that, and his, one of his kids said, I, well, you turned out okay, so why can't I do the same things that you did? So where do you, how do you lead a conversation with your student? How do you lead a conversation with your kid? When you have, you have come out, the Lord has like brought you out of some of these dark, scary places, especially when, you know, when there's big, st- you know, big stuff involved or right. whatever. How do you lead that conversation to help your to help your students see the danger, to help to help steer them in a direction that is towards God, um, but also be able to sit in that tension of if you make this mistake, I still am here and I still love you. I think as the storyteller, as the parent telling your story, you gotta make sure that you're explaining very in detail in a sense. Not only if you're sharing if you're sharing details of what you did. You also need to share details of, like, how that m- hurt you, mm-hmm. wounded you, hurt your wife or kids or, mm-hmm. or other things, and how that's shaped or affected your whole family dynamic. How you got to get into those details mm-hmm. if you're going to share the other details. Because if you just share the other details, like, for instance, I'm just going to use an example. Like, let's say as a parent, you're a parent. Let's say that you uh, slept with your girlfriends or boyfriends before you got married and then you got married and now you're sharing with your teenagers like the same kind of stuff and you're seeing those same habits come out of them well of course it's going to come out of them it came out in you that's your story so there it is and so you're going to try to fight that and you're going to try to call that story out and say hey listen like i i did this and and this happened in my life and i did get redeemed and the lord has redeemed that and is redeeming our marriage but if you fail to also go into the details well and let's say you're a man or you're the husband and you fail to go into the details of how, you know, you had to confess that to your wife before you got married, uh, your fiance, how you had to um, maybe go uh, to see counseling or a sexual addiction, you know, group or things like that. Uh, or if you need to share the details of how, you know, your wife didn't trust you for the longest time or how maybe your sex life in your marriage was actually worse than your sex life before and how it just totally destroyed pieces of your marriage in your first few years of marriage. You need to share those details because there are consequences that have occurred from your sin Mm -hmm. and from those things. And if a kid hears the story and goes, well, my dad did all those things. He turned out fine. He's okay. I think you need to let your kids know, like, I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. 
and I need to, it's, if it's in my story, I need to be like, I'm, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still not okay. I still suffer from this. I still have problems with this. You know, our, you know, marriages have these issues because of these things. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and you need, if you're, for instance, in our example, as a parent, you would have to, you know, you're probably still fighting to a degree for pieces of trust in your marriage and things like that. And that's really hard and difficult. And yes, God redeems it and will redeem it in completion in the end. But it doesn't mean that there are some regrets that you maybe even still have to this day. Um, do you wish that you did it? No. Your kid needs to know that you wish you didn't live in that manner, in that behavior, mm -hmm. uh, and that you, you wish you did things differently. Um, you wish that you knew those things. And I think sharing that grief, sharing that pain, mm -hmm. even though that might hurt, in so doing. So I think a temptation would be to want to share your story with your kids, but to avoid the pain side of things mm -hmm. so that you don't cry in front of your kids or you don't hurt that bad or so you don't reopen that wound for yourself. You kind of maybe paint or gloss over some of the consequences and pain so that you don't have to really think too hard about being a failure. You don't really think, have to think too hard about you know, your sin because it just hurts so bad. You mm -hmm. got to go there with your kids. They got to see you hurt. They got to see that. Uh, or else they'll, they will casually mm -hmm. think to themselves, dad had a lot of fun in college. Mom had a lot of fun in high mm -hmm. school. I'll do that. And then when it gets to it and get serious about it, I'll buckle down and, and figure it out. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are like really complicated in this because when you share your story with your kids, like it should not feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a casual conversation. It should feel kind of like you're dying or pieces of you are dying. It should feel really hard and difficult. And that's why, that's why no, not a lot of people do it. <laughs> it's too hard. Yeah. You have to reopen those places that have been to a degree you've kind of healed up or put band-aids on. You've got to show your kids that like, look how bad this wounded me or mm -hmm. hurt me. It wasn't worth it. I shouldn't have done it. Right. I don't want you to do it. You know, things like that. But really what we want is for your students to not change behaviorally. We want them to change in the heart. In the heart. And that's where your story comes in the most is because they can see in their mom and dad, wow, th this really shaped them or hurt them or wrecked them in a bad way or a good way, whatever it is. I want to live like that or I don't want to live like that, things like that, or wrestle with that. The goal is not for your kid to not make the same mistakes as you. I've, all of us as parents don't want our kids to make the same mistakes as us. They're probably going to. The goal, though, is for them to love Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we got to show them in all ways that, like, Jesus rescued me. That's mm -hmm. kind of the story that you need to tell when you're sharing your story. It's like, look at me and look how kind of broken I am. And look how Jesus rescues me. Mm -hmm. Look how he works in me still. And wor look how he works even in sin, things like that. Now, that's maybe not the answer that every parent wants to hear because <laughs> I think maybe some of the parents listening to this are thinking, oh, I'm going to tell my story to my kids so that they change and never make the same mistakes that right. I do. That's not going to – that probably will not be the result of you sharing your story. But the result of you sharing your story with your kids is going to be a bridge built between you and them of a relationship, and you, as you have a relationship with God, will be able to usher in with your relationship with your kid – the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want your kid to be exposed to over and over again is God's presence. And that is possible. One of the ways that's possible is through your story and through God's word, you know, living out in your story. So those are the things I'm thinking about, but I don't know if that's what you were necessarily Yeah, that's exactly for. So. That's what we're going for. Well, we're explaining a little bit. We've talked a lot about why. So how do we do this process of sharing your story. And we've talked a little bit about that, but I do think there is like an age appropriateness mm -hmm. and you're like, well, where do I even start? And you can go back and listen to our first episode on the spilt milk section or how to parent teens. And we talk about this thing called an ACE score, uh, which is adverse childhood experience score. You can even Google that and you can take the test yourself. It's 10 questions, but Ooh, I think that's your my phone. phone, my <laughs> phone. Oh, my phone's ringing. <laughs> a little background music like for us. <laughs> so i just muted it don't worry no. um but where was i where were we going a score oh a score yes if you, i was listening yeah if you had any kind of score one or mm -hmm. two or three anything i think maybe start there 
figure out those traumatic moments, rewrite those mm-hmm. stories, maybe sit down and journal those out. Mm-hmm. Uh, write those out, get those out, share that with a friend, share that with people that you trust over the next year. Wrestle with that. And then work with those people to come up with a way of how can I start disclosing these pieces of my story appropriately with my middle school student, with my high school student. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. And I do think like to a degree, like if you if you have a middle school student, the odds are they already have questions about sex. They already have these questions. They're already mm-hmm. wrestling with these things. If they have a smartphone, 100% already conversations like this, they're having, whether it's with you or not, they're having these mm-hmm. conversations. So they're exposed to this information. They're exposed to it even if they had friends who have smartphones. They're exposed to friends who are talking this way, language this way, or using language in this way. And you need to be a, one of the voices that they hear. So I think... You know, starting at 10, 11, you can start sharing, maybe not in intense detail, Mm -hmm. but pieces about maybe some of your sexual brokenness, pieces about maybe uh, how you uh, struggled or or were fighting sexual sin, like pieces like that. Or even you can bring into the story of like drugs or alcohol, things Mm -hmm. like that, or or other pieces like arrogance, pride, Mm self-righteousness, rebelling against your mom and dad, things like that. And when you were struggling with those things as a middle schooler and high schooler, it's a good sign of, okay, so let's say I was 11 or 12 when I kissed my first girl, when I kissed a f- girl for the first time. Well, then talk with your 11 or 12-year-old about kissing girls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And what that looks like. And share the stories of your past and your regrets or the things that you're glad maybe you didn't kiss and, and you were glad or things like that. Use those even as markers for you to know what's appropriate and not appropriate um, with your with your students. And then the other thing – at the same time, is as you share these stories, make sure that they understand that the reason why you're sharing this with them is because you believe in a really big Savior and a really big God that loves you no matter what, and that you're sharing these pieces of your heart because you believe that even if your own children go through this, mm-hmm. that, that the Lord will rescue them at the end of their lives, um, that God has their souls. Mikey, it was me. <laughs> it wasn't Nary. me. They know it wasn't me. <laughs> you can listen. They heard it. What they're I at went the end. off. I just went crazy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're breaking this up into two episodes. You're Lucky welcome. You. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> There's another 50 minutes of this. So. You're welcome. So many you're welcomes here. <laughs> so stay tuned for part two. I told. Uh, before we did this, I was like, we're going to tease them. I'm going to try to tease them. Like at the beginning, make people like want to listen more and more. I just, yeah. <laughs> this is the tease. <laughs> we literally stopped the conversation <laughs> mid, basically mid sentence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what is, it's a cliffhanger. There you go. Cliffhanger. Wait for part two. I wish we had Monday. one of those like graphics. It's like to be continued. Ba-da-da-da. Like they did on the 90 sitcoms. I know. We don't have that though. Oh, well. Oh, well. To Love be you continued. You matter to us. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for being here today for the Spilt Milk podcast. We are so thankful that you tuned in. Um, we would love for you to like and subscribe our podcast on whatever podcast platform you listen on. Also, if you loved this content, we would love for you to share this with your friends. We think this is valuable content and we want it to get out there. Also, you can give us a five star review. That would be super helpful. It gets it to people um, who it may not have gotten to otherwise if you want to follow us anywhere else you can follow us on instagram at seven river student ministry you can also follow us on facebook at seven river student ministry and if you have any comments questions concerns advice on how to podcast (laughs) you can email us at srsm at sevenrivers.org thanks for tuning in today